the Westinghouse Electric Corporation and your Westinghouse dealer present highlights of the 1956 Democratic Presidential Convention. This is Walter Cronkite at the Democratic Convention in Chicago. Let's listen to Governor Frank Clement of Tennessee making his keynote address. We have assembled on this historic occasion in the 164th year of our party's glorious existence for the purpose of engaging in the deliberations, setting forth the issues, and making certain nominations not confined merely to the interest and welfare of the Democratic Party, but dedicated to the greater glory of God, the welfare of all our citizens, the leadership of the free world, and the progress of all mankind. You can justify, you can justify begging God for guidance you can justify studying the record, and after you've done it, going out and fighting and singing in unison, you and I together, of every race, creed, and color, let us go forward singing in unison the inevitable victory hymn, Precious Lord, take our hand, lead us on. Thank you, very much. Of course, the big news here is former President Harry Truman's outspoken support of Averill Harriman and what effect it will have on Adlai Stevenson's campaign for the nomination. Eleanor Roosevelt makes it clear that a battle for party leadership is on. Our party may be the oldest Democratic party, but our party, our party must live as a young party, and it must have young leadership. They must take into account the advice of the elders, but they must have the courage to look ahead, to face new problems with new solutions. While the candidates gather their respective forces, the civil rights plank is settled, the platform adopted, and the great moment is here. Delegates nominate their candidates, and it's a walk away for one man. Sam Rayburn makes the acclamation announcement. A delegate to this convention moves to suspend the rules and make the nomination of Governor Stevenson by acclamation. Those in favor will vote aye. There are no no's. The ayes have it. Stevenson comes before the convention immediately after his nomination, not to make an acceptance speech, rather to make a surprising suggestion. I have decided that the selection of the vice presidential nominee should be made through the free processes of this convention. So the vice presidential race is thrown wide open. It's almost too close for comfort until, at the crucial moment, Senator Albert Gore of Tennessee makes this dramatic statement. With thanks to this great free democratic convention, I request that my name be withdrawn in favor of my colleague, Senator S. Tisky Popper. And Stevenson and Kefauver it is. Former President Harry Truman gets up before the entire convention and says, I am here tonight to give my full support to Adlai Stevenson and S. Tisky Popper. Stevenson is a real fighter, and I ought to know. And we hear from the newly chosen vice presidential candidate who once wore a coonskin cap, Estes Kefauver. There certainly weren't any smoke-filled room decisions made here this afternoon. The man the Democrats have chosen as their standard bearer in 1956, Adley Stevenson, makes his acceptance speech and speaks of a new America. I come here on a solemn mission. I accept your nomination and your program. <laughs> History's headlong course has brought us, I devoutly believe, to the threshold of a new America, to the America of the great ideals and noble vision, which are the stuff our future must be made of. I say that our objectives 
are not for the timid. They are not for those who look backward, who are satisfied with things as they are, who think that this great nation can ever sleep or ever stand still. Standing as we do here tonight at this great watershed, this great fork of history. May we never be silent. May we never lose our faith in freedom and in the better destiny of man. And now I bid you goodbye. And I hope that we can meet again in every town and village in America.